Permission control can be the basis for successful team collaboration, but it can be very hard to balance these two concepts. Even harder if your team is constantly growing. Join me in this episode of Decoded Quick Hits, where I try to guide you through the journey of team management when the team is also growing. You might know Lifetime because that's the place where you go to deploy applications between environments or because you have a bird's eye view of your application portfolio and environments in your infrastructure. Or even because it's the place where you can find a detailed overview of your application's performance through the whole software development stack. And while those are very important, there's also a very important aspect to team management. And that's what we are going to focus on this episode. And before we start, important thing to note here is that every team has its its own characteristics and that's fine. So I guess the recommended way of doing this is to make sure that you map each team member and team responsibility within what Lifetime offers you. So with that said, let's bootstrap a small team, one tech lead to developers. The tech lead is the only person responsible for deploying applications into production and developers can do whatever they want in development, but nothing in production. They can only just see the applications. And so as this small team has success and the business is very happy with whatever they are delivering, we want to have more people joining the team. So with this growth, we will have to change some permissions or create an other permissions. And that's how we are going through this video. So let's start with the small team. And jumping right into lifetime, you can already see that the team is already formed. So we have four people. One of them is me and I have all the rights, the administrator rights in the infrastructure. And we have Alex, that is a tech lead, L and Fran, they are developers. So how do we do about these roles? If we go here to roles, we can see a summary of all the roles that we have um, active in our uh, infrastructure. And I know that a developer in the development environment can change and deploy, create applications and end dependencies to the system in the development environment, but can only list applications in production. As a tech lead can change and deploy uh, the same as a developer, but can also do the same in the production environment. Uh, which means that developers are able to create applications without having to ask for the tech lead and can add dependencies in the development environment. But if they want to go live with that application, that part, that role is part of the tech lead role. And this is how this team works, right? It could be fair if we don't want developers to create applications or if we want developers to also stage uh, applications to production. So this is the team dynamic that we have in place. And so moving forward in time, the team had a lot of success, created applications that are now supporting the company business, and we want to have more people joining so they can help the small team. And now what happens is that we have three development teams with one tech lead and two developers each team. And with the current set of permissions that we configured, it allows everyone to change and deploy applications, even if they are not part of your focus. So for example, what we want to have now is two teams that are focused on HR and finance processes separately, and we want them to be able to only change and deploy those applications and nobody else. So in order to do that, we needed to do a few changes. So going back to Lifetime, what happens is we created a new role that is called member, and this will be the default role for everyone that, it, that joins the team from now on. And what this allows is that it allows to monitor and add dependencies and dependencies to the system to an application. It does not allow to create applications in development. And in production, you can only see the list of applications. So this is the default one that everyone now has. If we take a look at the users, they now all have the default role as a member. And to make sure that the teams are now focused only on the applications that they actually need to change, we created two teams, finance and HR. And if we look at the finance 
squad, let's call it squad, um, we have three users and four applications, meaning that Alex, even though as the default role is member, Alex can be a tech lead of these four applications. It can deploy, change and deploy to production these four applications and only these four. As L and Fran, as developers, can only change and improve these four applications in development. And we have the same principle to the HR team. However, two issues arise with this kind of configuration. One is that given that the default rule is to only list and add dependencies, if you have the need to deploy to production applications that are not part of your team, you won't be able to do it. And another one is that, once again, given that the default role is to only add and list, a developer cannot create applications because creating applications is part of the environment-wide permission set. So in order to create applications, and let me switch here to how a developer will see lifetime. And as you can see, I'm logged as LDEV. So in order to create applications, a developer will need to log into Lifetime and create an application through this pop-up because you can choose the team and this is the team that L is part of. So as soon as you create an application, you can then drum, jump to Service Studio and continue the development of the application. As per the other issue that is deploying other applications, switching back to the team, what we can do is, given the dynamics of our team and given that tech leads, all of them have a weekly call where they align on everything that is needed, they can also align on permissions and the best practices to deploy applications that are not part of their team. So we are going to go to the users and every tech lead will have the default role as tech lead as well. And this will allow every tech lead to deploy applications to production, even if they are not part of the team that they are focused on. Or if you're not very comfortable with that, you can create a new team called shared assets or applications or whatever you feel is more proper for this and keeping in mind that the tech leads can have member as default role but they can be also added to this team with the tech lead and once again what this means is that every application that is here the tech leads will have the permission to deploy to application so there as you can see there are several ways of going about this issue make sure that you use the one that is the most appropriate for your team dynamics and to finish a cool thing that i've learned recently is that you can use teams for another purpose different from permissions and access control that is to create a team just for forge components in order to have them in a special bucket where you can easily identify which components are from forge and which applications are built by your team from scratch so that can also be a cool use case for you to think about by using teams and so in summary there's no correct way of doing this make sure that you understand your team dynamics which responsibilities you want uh, each team member to have map those responsibilities into permissions and in into out systems lifetime roles assign them to your teams if you have vertical teams and horizontal teams you can create those using the teams feature and then assigning the given roles that you feel that are most most appropriate for that team hopefully this can help unveil the mystery over team management in lifetime there's also something to be said as well for more operational tasks configurations operational tasks to the environment but this was a little bit more focused on development teams so that's it hopefully this will be helpful for you all if you like this, make sure to like it, subscribe it, and stay tuned for more episodes. Thank you, and see you in the next one.